And we are almost active. Uh, we got what? Five seconds, four, three, two, one, eight o'clock. What's up, y'all? It's another Tuesday. Welcome to the DJ Kenny Parker Show now. We do this every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, shout out to Jay Wu, 72, Papa Sincere, what's up? Green Lion Entertainment, all of the, the regulars in the building. Napoleon, what's up, Kim? Napoleon checking in. Thank you so much, Cincinnati in the house. Are you back here now? Gregory Nettas, I was reading this earlier about your uh, Jeopardy question with Biz. That's hilarious. Still have not brought myself to watch the Biz documentary, y'all. Um, Gregory Nettas, yo, Kenny, DJ Premier, the GOAT. So what's up is back on YouTube, and I'm going to speak about DJ Premier in a few minutes. I want to make sure more people got on here. Um, I just want to give him a quick shout out. I want to talk to him in, about him in a second. Yeah, I watched the Militia uh, Breakdown. So uh, shout out to Cream um, and everybody on the record. Shout out Bumpy Knuckles. I have not seen Bumpy in a while. What's up, Bumpy? Um, Big Suge. And Guru, rest in peace. E-Money, what's good? DJ KP, hope everything is good. Everything is great. Pat S. Um, Pat S said he'll see, see, see y'all at Venice West this Friday. Matt Lyon with the Blast Master. That's dope. Chris is out in uh, the West Coast. I will not be there. I am here in the New York area. But we know the show is going to be dope. Shout out to Sun One on the wheels. Um. Imperial J, the MC, what's up? JT, what's up? Um, Fluffy Toenails, it's not a party unless you're here. What up, KP? Any artist that everybody else is feeling, but you just wasn't? <laughs> Yo, you come with the crazy questions. I probably wouldn't, um, I probably wouldn't say that. Um, I did do a story about ODB and how I wasn't feeling, not him, but the song, uh, I like it, Raw Shimmy Shimmy, y'all. I was not feeling that song when I first heard it, him doing it live. I did a whole story on this on this channel. Check it out, Epic Fails, Wu-Tang Edition. Um, it's a funny story about that. But I, I'm not going to say an artist who I wasn't feeling. But just like everybody else, there's a few artists that I wasn't feeling that grew on me. And there's a few artists that I wasn't feeling that never grew on me and that, that people like. But I'm not, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> ah, Haitian Space Program, Peace with the Shot. This is the only show I set an alarm for. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Haitian Space Program. I love that name too, by the way. Corey Flood, what's up? What's up? Nature, what up? Michael Bali, Michael ba Ball, or is it Bali? I can't see that. I made it. Well, you made it. Thank you so much. 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Green Line Entertainment, Rosmel, what's good? Ice Cold Beverage, what's good? All the regulars are here, F you too. I've been working out, Kenny. Make this one exciting. Yeah, he, we in there. <laughs> Just Blaze. Yo, peace. My brother, Just Blaze in the building. And one of my favorite producers of all time that I never really get to mention, not just because you're on here, Just Blaze, but one of my favorite producers ever and a dope DJ, just a dope artist. Shout out to Just Blaze on the check-in. Um, Chatter World LLC, peace. Um, yes, D to, the t D to the T, good evening. Sergeant Crease Grease, Kenny P, what up? And Olivier, what up? Check on a check in from BK, BK all day. Flatbush, we lived in Flatbush, we lived in East New York, we lived in Bed Stuy, Crown Heights. He was all over the place, man. Um, yeah, let me say this real quick. If y'all watched the live last week, I said I had two missions this week to the week. One was talk to Just Ice, and two was catch up with DJ Premier. And I managed to do both of those things this week. 
And it's funny, those of you out there that uh, understand synchronicity, there's something going on with me and Just Ice. Let me tell you all a quick story. Um, this past summer, I ran it. I was at the hospital visiting a friend of mine who was in the hospital, and I ran into a guy named DMX. The original DMX, the bit now, not the original, because there's Davy DMX, then there's the beatbox DMX, who used to roll with just ice, the one who's doing the beatbox on Latoya, Latoya, and I think he does the beatbox on Yes, You Are the Hip Hop Gangster. His name was DMX. I have not seen him since the Union Square days. And I bumped into him this summer at a hospital. And we exchanged numbers. So D, just a chance to be walking past each other. Another 30 seconds, I wouldn't even have saw him. DMX gave my number to Just Ice. So Just Ice hit me. So I'm like, damn it, I, I, I got to hit Just Ice back. But I wanted to call him, not text him. Keep in mind, time went by, time went by, and I did not put Just Ice. I didn't save his number properly in my phone, and I couldn't find it, y'all. So for the past few months, people have been saying to me, what's up with Just Ice? What's up with Just Ice? And I'm like, I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. So I went back, and I found the number in my phone way back just a few days ago. Now, check this out, y'all. I text the number, and I'm like, this is Kenny Parker. Is this still Just Ice number? He hit me back. Yo, it's Just. What's up? So I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to call Just. Now, I also mentioned last week that I ran into DJ Premier at a, a Super Bowl party I was doing with Heather B and Sway. Shout out to Sway. Shout out to Heather B. If y'all didn't check out the Heather B and he me and Heather B live that we did about a month ago on this channel, it was good fun. So at that party, the Super Bowl party, I ran into DJ Premier and I posted a picture on my Instagram of when I saw him. My Instagram is DJ Kenny Parker. He had on a sweatshirt that had Gangstar on it. And I was like, yo, Prem, I have got to get that sweatshirt. And he was like, I got you. I got one for you. Come to the studio. So I'm like, Prem, I'm coming all the way out to the studio to check you. He's like, come on, I got a shirt for you. So the following day, I went out to the studio to catch up with my man, DJ Premier, and I ran into him. Now, real quick, back in 2010, Premier gave me this shirt. It's a Gangstar shirt. It says Gangstar Forever. And on the back is a list of all of their albums. This shirt is crazy. I wore this shirt all the time. I wore it on tour. Uh, I wore it in BDP shows. I was rocking the Gangstar shirt. Shout out to Preem. So when I saw him at the studio, he hooked me, y'all, with the Gangstar sweatshirt. I am so excited. I'm going to probably rock this. And my next video that I post, which is going to be an epic fails this week. He gave me this shirt, this sweatshirt, and y'all, Preem hooked me with this Gangstar 25 years of, what is this? 25 years of truth. Preem hooked me up, y'all. So shout out to my man, the iconic DJ Premier. I was in the studio with him for about three hours. We were just in there talking and laughing, talking about old hip hop. He actually dug, I was going through some of his records, walking around the studio, looking at his plaques. He actually dug out the original sample that he used on his first album, DJ Premier in Deep Concentration. He pulled out a, a, a sample from that song and he played the sample and he played and he was showing me how he um manipulated it to make that song just for producers and djs i was just in pure hip-hop heaven um so as we're talking we're talking about hip-hop and then the just ice's name comes up and crazy premier was like yo i gotta hit just ice up and he calls just ice right there while we're in the studio 
and puts him on speak on um uh FaceTime. So he's like, guess who's here? Kenny's here. And he's like, yo, I just texted him yesterday. So Preem hands me the phone and I end up talking to Justice again on Preem's phone for 15 minutes. Me and Justice was talking and um, I got to call him back. So I'm trying to get him on the show, y'all. Uh, see if we can work that out. But it's just crazy how synchronicity works, how I bumped into DMX who gave Just Ice my number, and I've been meaning to call Just Ice, and you guys have been getting on me about it. Then I just went to see Preem, and he just, out of the blue, called Just Ice. It was just a whole crazy day, and that was yesterday, y'all. So anyway, that's my quick story. Um, so yes, I got my gear from Preem, and yes, I spoke to my man Just Ice, the original hip-hop gangster. All right, I got all of that out, y'all. I wanted to say that before we moved on. Um, let me see. Let me do. Let me check out some more of this. MM Crossfire, what's up? Salute, uh, G off Warrell, what's up, Kenny? What's good, Damon Clark? Yo, Kenny Parker, almost done with the book, man. Phenomenal. Thank you so much. You know, I always gotta plug the book, y'all. If you guys don't have the book, my brother's name is Kenny. It's action packed. I go through the whole history of BDP. The, the real origin story, my family stuff behind the scenes, a lot of uh, hip hop stories and stuff that I saw. It's just like this channel, really, just in a book form, but it's much deeper. You guys uh, pick it up. And thank you so much, Damon Clark, for picking up the book. Um, Noah Wilson, be more checking in, bro. Shout out to be more. Charm City, 73 Trini was good. Corey Flood. Corey Flood, Kenny, go back in about the music business from last week. That was dope. Yeah, I know I got a little winded last week about the music business. I might touch on a couple more things um, this week. But, yeah, I got a little winded. I got get a little excited when I talk about this thing we call the music business. It's all really an illusion. It's really smoke and mirrors. Just Blaze could tell you all about it. I'm sure he has some crazy stories. Um Pat S, what's good? Kenny Parker, smooth like Parker Brothers. What's good? Corey Singleton, Napoleon, we're back. We're back for a minute. Yes. Uh, let's see. It's here. Soul Taker 73, thank you so much. I really appreciate the contribution to the channel. Thank you. He says, Sup, KP, can you tell us about the unreleased joint? Things are getting hectic from the return of the Boom Bap sessions. You know what's crazy about that? Me and Premier was just talking about that song. Yo, this is crazy. Me and Preem was just talking about that song yesterday. Um, and Preem was saying that he still has a copy of that song. I don't think I've ever heard it. Um, I wasn't in the studio when they made it. But Preem was saying how J. Rue the Damager, shout out to my man Rue, my West Indian Day Parade partner, he is on that song. Um Things are getting hectic, but he said, Preem said it didn't make the return of the Boom Bap album. Um, yo, this is crazy how synchronicity works. I was just talking to Preem about that. Um, so no, I was not in the session for that song, but Preem still has a copy of it. It didn't make the album for some reason, and J. Ru the Damager is on that song. All right, let me scroll down. Um, Roberto Torres, Kenny P, what it be, what it be? Rod Woman, greetings from Toronto. Toronto is always in the building. Um, shout out to Toronto. I need to get back out there. H Bippy, welcome, welcome. You finally uh, made it, made it this week. Uh, uh, let's see. M Raccoon, M Raccoon Eyes. Um, what were your thoughts when you first heard Tim Dogg's Fuck Compton? My first thoughts. Oh, 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 whoa, he went all the way in on the NWA. Whoa, this is crazy. That was my first thoughts of it. Um, and of course, we, we're super cool with Ultra Magnetic, as, as you guys might have uh, heard KRS mention before. Back in the day, BDP and Ultra Magnetic were practically one group before they came out. 
they were that close. Um, this is before my time in BDP. Of course, I'm super cool with all the brothers, and I spoke to said G this summer, and I will have him on this channel um, soon enough. So we, I want to talk about the Criminal Minded album with him. But um, I didn't know Tim Dog until I didn't meet Tim Dog until the song was out. So when I met Tim Dog, this song was already on fire. I remember he used to travel everywhere with like 30 dudes from Webster Projects in the Bronx, real rough dudes. Shout out to my man, I God, rest in peace, that used to roll with them. Uh, oh, those of you that know the, 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 the legendary street dude, I God, um, they all used to roll with Tim Dog back in the day. So um, yeah, that my first thoughts on that was what? <laughs> um, CC. Thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. I really appreciate it. On Live Hardcore Worldwide, KRS asks you, where did we get this beat? And you reply, it ain't no dub plate. Can you explain about dub plates? Yo, y'all are killing me because me and Preem was just talking about that as well. Um, let me first explain what a dub plate is. A dub plate is similar to what an acetate, what we call an acetate. It's basically a temporary record. Only thing, an acetate is big. An acetate is the size of a regular record, where a dub plate is actually smaller, the size of like a 45, a seven inch. And the Jamaican guys, the reggae artists mostly use dub plates and hip hop artists use the bigger 12 inch um, acetates. They're basically the same thing. I think actually, a dub plates probably last a little longer, I think, but it's really a temporary record. You could only play them. I know acetate, you could only play about 30 times before the grooves start to wear out. Whereas a record, a vinyl record, the grooves don't really wear out for maybe hundreds and hundreds of plays, if ever. And I figure a dub plate is probably along those same lines, maybe 50 plays and they'll wear out. But you can make a dub plate of anything. If you, you know, if you have a dat or even a cassette of anything, you used to take it. There was a dude in Flatbush who used to make the reggae dub plates. I went there a couple times to make some BDP dub plates. He used to make stuff for Lauren Hill. He used to make stuff for all the reggae dudes, Buju, and all of them. He used to go way deep up in Flatbush. But of course, I'm a Flatbush dude, so I was good uh, and get my dub plates made. Now, on Live Hardcore Worldwide, the funny story is this. We were filming that section of the Live Hardcore Worldwide at a club called SOBs in New York City. So right before we went in, and I've mentioned this before, I really don't like to talk on records, y'all. Anytime you've ever heard me speak on any BDP record, it was really KRS going, say this, say this, and getting on my back, kind of like forcing me to speak. So right before, this is literally right before we walked into the club, I went in first. He said, when you go in, say, this is the first live hip-hop album ever recorded in hip-hop history, something like that. At the time when we were recording it, it was the first live album. But I do believe that by the time it came out, the two live crew beat us by a couple of months. So technically, the two live crew has the first live recorded Hip hop album. I don't know if they have a video that went with it like we did, but they technically beat us. But we filmed, we recorded ours like a year earlier. It just took a minute to come out. So when I walk in the club, I, I give this speech. This is the first live uh, hip hop album. Blah blah blah. So Chris also says we had an SP twelve hundred, SP twelve hundred drum machine set up in SOBs. And he had a beat already programmed in the SP-1200. So he says, when you walk in, say this, hit the beat. We already have, the beat is already in there and I'm going to walk out. So I come in, I say what I got to say. I hit the beat and a beat comes on that I never heard before. But Chris is saying, this is no dub plate, meaning this is not even on vinyl. This, this is not on vinyl. This beat is not on vinyl. It's not even a dub plate. This is coming straight out of a drum machine. But the funny part was Chris comes on stage right after the beats playing. It's the first time I'm hearing the track and he turns and he goes in front of everybody. 
Yo, Kenny, where we get this beef from? <laughs> like that. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know. It's the first time I'm hearing this beat right now. And I said, you know, you, you know, we made it up. But what I what I was originally saying was, you know, you made it up. But it came out as you know we made it up, but it was kind of jumbled. So I said, you know we made it up like that. And I remember Queen Latifah, shout out to the Queen. She called me up and was like, why were you mumbling on the record? What was wrong with you? And I was like, yo, Chris caught me off guard by asking me, yo, Kenny, where we get this beat from? And I never heard this beat in my life. And I did not play it off that well. So if you guys go back and listen to the live hardcore worldwide, the vinyl, the audio, and you hear the beat. Well, I say, here we go, y'all, and it throws it on. I That's the first time I ever heard that beat as I pressed play. So there was a funny story that I was just telling Preem this yesterday. Wow, this is crazy. Um, Let me scroll down. That was kind of um, Soka Samuel, the Red Indian. Whoa, we need to hear it. Yes. Oh, and real quick about Premier. Premier was in the studio working on something special, y'all. Wait, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say what it was, but wait till you guys hear it. And all I heard was I heard the track when Preem put on the track. It was one of them beats that she said, oh, oh my God, it was like that. And then the artist that Premier was working on walked in the studio. And I did not hear the artist. The artist was working on the track while I was talking to Preem. We were in the other room. But hearing this beat and knowing who the artist is that's going to get on this beat, boy, wait till you guys hear this. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Sugar Daddy One Williams, wow. Um, Lee Moore, Three Times Dope. I love Three Times Dope. Shout out to Three Times Dope. Shout out to EST, the Agniculus one. I think he's one of the most underrated MCs out of Philly. He never gets mentioned when they talk about Philly MCs. EST was dope. Um, Crown Jewels Music Group. Here we go, y'all, live and direct. Cypress Hill sampled that um, from the Black Sunday intro. Wow, they did? Damn. Wish I had publishing on that. <laughs> I probably should have had publishing on that because that's my original uh, words. Everything I said on that song, KRS-One told me to say. So technically he wrote, as far as publishing goes, he wrote that. But here we go, y'all. That was me. So that little piece, I should have got some money. Cypress Hill Black Sunday, I believe that's like double platinum. Dang. Publishing on that probably be a little piece on a double platinum album. Publishing probably be thirty, forty thousand dollars ish. Sharif Lawrence, BX all day guru, lived on my block, one eighty third, claiming BK. Fuck out of here! Oh wow, I didn't know that. But shout out to Guru all day. That was my dude. Um. He might have claimed I lived in the BX and BK and Harlem, but I claim BK all day and my brother claims BX all day. So, I mean, it ain't where you from. It's where you at. It ain't where, it ain't where you at. It's where you from. Um, user unknown at LTK. They are the, the lacquers that you are used to create the Oh, that must be a private conversation. Roberto Torres. Hope it's Nas. Can't comment. Sharif Lawrence, EST, yes. Um, let me go back a little bit. ABC, I'm just going to start here. Uh, Sugar Daddy, one was that Nicholas one, yes. Just Blaze, think EST just had a birthday. A word, a shout out to EST. I, he's also a songwriter. I do believe EST wrote, didn't he write some, some stuff for Britney Spears and NSYNC as well? Like in his later years, I do believe that. 
Fluffy toenails. So who is Premier making that track with? <laughs> it's going to be epic, y'all. That's all I'm saying. EST also wrote for Beyonce, so he's a well-rounded writer. Yeah, he he wrote um some big uh I think he wrote Me Myself and I, right? Not sure, but he he became a, a big songwriter in the later years, but he was a dope MC. Was is a dope MC. JT, absolutely right about EST. Chuck Nice was wildly underrated in production terms. Yes. Three Times Dope was a dope group, but there were so many dope groups in 89, 90 that you could be a dope group and just get lost in the shuffle. Three times dope was was a was an excellent group. And then they didn't they bring out or wasn't they part of Steady B and Cool C? Weren't they like a whole clique, if I recall? Haitian space space program, funky dividends, one of my favorites. Mine's too. Um, and I'm gonna shout out a guy named D Ski. Who was Heather B's father? We used to call him D Ski. He used to love funky dividends back in '89. Um, let me scroll down. Crown Jewels, Cypress Hill definitely sampled it, and Black Sunday was mass mass selling. Yes, damn! Don't please don't even bring that up. <laughs> oh, let me see. Crusher Blackwell. Hey, Kenny, I noticed during the BDP live performances between late 89 and 90, Miss Melody was appearing less and less with the BDP crew during that time. What was the issue? <clears throat> well, uh, let me say it like this. Hold on. Red Cup. 89, 90, that's when I first joined BDP officially. There was no issue with Miss Melody. She was at all the shows and she used to perform. Um, she was also working on her solo album at the time, but she also performed. She was at every show. She used to come out and do her Jack of Spades. Nah, man, I ain't buying it. And the whole crowd used to go wild. She used to do self-destruction. Nah, she was there in 89, 90. Um, after that, you know, BDP, I'm going to use the word downsized after the Edutainment album. And, um, you know, KRS, Miss Melody, they were married. So that's husband and wife stuff. So I just, you know, I stay out of that <laughs> for real. But 89, 90, it was all good then. Lee Moore, Diamond D was one of my favorites. Diamond D is one of everybody's favorites. Shout out to Diamond D. He is an absolute beast on the 45s, y'all. If y'all ever get a chance to see Diamond D scratch on the 45s, he is ridiculous. Napoleon, bro, hearing you talk about hip hop is like listening to somebody falling in love with the culture all over again. Uh, thank you, Napoleon. Um, really, I am a huge hip hop fan. I've said this before on this channel. I cannot believe the amount of hip hop experiences I got to have being in this game, thanks to my brother. Um, if you had told the 11, 12, 13 year old Kenny that he would meet some of the people that he has met, he wouldn't even believe you. And I'm still some, I'm still like, like a 13 year old walking around in hip hop. And I've mentioned this before, like just my birthday was in July and Cool Mo D called and left a message on my machine, happy birthday on my, on my not my machine, on my, on my phone. And I'm like, yo, that's Cool Mo D from the Treacherous Three. Feel the heartbeat, feel the heartbeat. The dude that battled Busy B, those things blew my mind when I was a teenager. I actually get to talk to that dude like that's my friend. I can't believe it. Tila Rock just left me a message. It's yours had New York on lockdown. I get to actually talk to these people. And like I said, if you guys haven't read the book, for those that have, coming from where we came from and what we went through and what my I witnessed my brother went through, it's an absolute miracle. 
So when I talk about hip hop, y'all, it is like I'm falling in love all over again because I really can't believe it. Like I can't believe like I see Rakim and he's like, "Yo, Kenny, what's up?" And I'm like, "What's up, Ra?" Like Rakim knows my name. Like that's really unbelievable to me. And like I was in the studio yesterday with DJ Premier. I mean, he's probably at the top of the list. Of, of the most iconic hip hop producer of all time. He's probably the number one guy in most people's list. And I've known Premier for 35 years now. You know, that's my dude. But still, Preen playing me a sample from Deep uh, DJ Premier and Deep Concentration, that's unbelievable, man. I'm still a fan. I'm a fan to this day. Um, let me scroll down. I just saw somebody put Showbiz and AG. Shout out to Showbiz and AG. That's the fam right there. Um, you know, every time I touch this thing, y'all, it just shoots. So I'm just going to pick up right here. Um, Benny Doyle, late to the party. Kenny, why is the why are there a the in front of the Bronx but not in Brooklyn or Queens? That's a good question. The Bronx. That's a very good question. That's something you probably have to look up in Wikipedia. That probably, you know, that's something that was decided probably in 1784, something like that, when New York was established. I have no idea. Um, Tone 210, Steady B. Shout out to Steady B. Um, I met him in the studio and Chris was doing a remix for Sirius. He was mad cool. April 7th artwork, 30 or 40,000 K on that publishing. Kenny, please school us on items like this. I remember you said you were going to go over how you dislike how the industry works or tell us of those experiences. Yeah, it's just so much I got to tell you guys that I try to break it up into little sections. But um, for those of you that don't know how publishing works, there's two kinds of publishing. There's the publishing that every time your song is played on the radio, television, the videos, in a stadium, like a sports stadium, anywhere where they play a jukebox, anywhere where they play your song, the artists, the writers of the song, and when I say writers, I mean, when they consider writers, the person who wrote the lyrics and the person who did the music are both 50-50. So you could, you could have done the music, say you played the guitars, you're considered a writer, you wrote the music. So anybody who has writer's credits on, the, on a song gets a little piece of the pie. I do believe my numbers might be off, but I do believe every time your song got played on the radio, it was like 25 cents or something. And that got divvied up amongst whoever had songwriters. It could be two people. It could be one person. If you're Stevie Wonder, you own, you know, you wrote the lyrics and the music. Or if you like Prince, you own all of the publishing. Or if you're somebody who just wrote the lyrics and somebody else did the music, two people. Or, you know, however many people. Anyway, 25 cents every time your song gets played for a big hit record can go into the millions. Um, you see when uh, Robin Thicke got sued by Marvin Gaye's family for the song that Pharrell did. Uh, it slips my mind. Y'all know the big song, Robin Thicke and Pharrell, and they got sued. And... Um, only T.I. got to keep the money. Marvin Gaye's family won $7 million in publishing rights to that one song. I mean, that was a massive record, but $7 million for that song. I think T.I. got $2 million for his piece of that song, and he got to keep his $2 million, but the rest of it that was supposed to go to Pharrell and Robin Thicke went to Marvin Gaye's family. I say all that to say publishing adds up and that's the real that's the real 
key to getting paid. It's not so much the royalties, because we talked last week, the record companies had a chokehold on your royalties, but the publishing is yours, and it can really add up on a hit record, even a good record. And then the second part of publishing is what they call mechanical royalties, meaning every time your record gets pressed, you get money for that too. Every time they press a record, you get money, probably something like a nickel or, or four cents, something like that. But that shit piles up. Imagine a platinum record, a million records sold times pennies comes hundreds of thousands, whatever, my math, y'all do the math. But I say all that to say people who have stolen people's publishing stole hundreds, I, I believe tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in the history of music have been stolen from artists simply because they didn't even know what publishing was and they signed it away and they didn't even have to or it was stolen away and they didn't even know. And I say all that to say, even a song I got, they sampled BDP on on um, on um, Cypress Hill, right? So I imagine that KRS owns all of the publishing of that song since he wrote and produced that even that even that snippet of a song is still considered a song. So he owns all of the publishing of that song. So even whatever song they sampled, even if it wasn't a single that mechanical royalties still pile up, y'all. And it, uh, uh, Black Sunday probably sold, what, 2 million copies? So that's 2 million pennies adding up. Also, we don't know how many, if that song got played. And this is worldwide. You get publishing from America. That's the big chunk. And then each country is another check. UK, France, Canada. So you just get checks and checks and checks all over the world, Africa, wherever your song is played, you will get money. And I say that to say my little piece of that sample, had I had publishing on that song, would have probably been, I mean, each each song on Black Sunday is probably worth $100,000 easy. So my little piece probably could have been like 30, 25, something like that. Had I had publishing on, here we go, y'all. <laughs> Which today I would have. Today, if I had said, here we go, y'all, on a song and somebody sampled it, they would have had to pay me. But back in the 90s, 19, when, when did we do that? 1990? It was a whole different world. Um, but yeah, uh, that's. Just, I, I hope I didn't bore you guys with that, but that's just like a quick a synopsis of how publishing works. And there's horror stories about people losing their publishing. Just Blaze, if you're still watching, I would love to have you come on this channel one day and talk about publishing and, and the stories you've heard. I know you've heard some doozies. Um, M M M MMA Crossfire, we were spoiled in the 90s. Yes, we were. Yes, we really were. Um, Tech Vision, I've heard Karis once say before that Illmatic is better than Criminal Minded. Would you agree, Kenny? Apples and Oranges. There's certain albums that's so high up. It, it comes down to choice. Knowing Chris, I don't know if he actually believes that. <laughs> I just... I think my brother just caught a stray. Um, Illmatic was incredible, obviously. Criminal Minded is a... Tr see, that, that, see, that Criminal Minded album started like three or four trends in hip-hop. Started. So to me, I put Criminal Minded way up there as one of those pivotal moments. We talked about this about three um, lives back the moments in hip hop that changed the game. I don't know if Illmatic changed the game. I think it was great for Nas. It introduced us to an in iconic MC and the producers were iconic as well. But I don't know 
if it changed the game like Criminal Minded did. That's that we could debate that. Um, let me scroll down. Muck Muck the General, yeah, what up, Kenny? Why doesn't KRS produce as much as he used to? I've asked this question on this channel. I think it's a crime. Um, KRS produced the first. Well, he produced the first four BDP albums. I mean, of course, he had help. I mean, I'm going to throw... No, he didn't produce the first four. Scott LaRock produced and Sid G produced Criminal Minded, although KRS produced The Bridge Is Over. And then he did Balmy's Necessary, Ghetto Music, Edutainment, Some of Sex and Violence, and Some of um, Return of the Boom Bap. And um, I was just talking to Preem yesterday. Preem said, and this blew my head off. Preem told me yesterday that uh, while they were working on Return of the Boom Bat, Preem was in the studio. While they were working on Return of the Boom Bat, he watched Chris bang out Mad Ism with Channel Live. He watched Chris bang out that beat real quick while they were working on Return of the Boom Bat. Preem said he watched Chris bang out mad is and that beat was ridiculous um and so to answer your question i think christian i i think well, what happened was after sex, i did i did a breakdown of the sex and violence album on this channel you guys could check it out and long story short after the sex and violence album did not sell as much as the first four bdp albums did jive made a decision that it was time to bring in new producers and everybody who produced before um, was out, including myself, mostly myself. Um, and I think they went away from KRS-One and I think BDP had a sound. And although Chris and Preem captured that sound for Return of the Boom Bap, I still believe BDP had a certain sound because a lot of these beats Chris has in his head and he, and he execute them like Black Cop, a song that I co-produced that um, the credits weren't right on that. But um, he had that whole beat in his head. So I basically just executed it on a drum machine, what he was telling me he, he wanted. Um, and I think it was a mistake for to go away from KRS-One. I think it was a mistake because even after, even after they stopped, KRS was not the lead producer. He still did work on Return of Boom Bap. That was dope. He still produced Mad Ism. He still produced Mad Lion. Like he still had beats. Oh yeah, he still had a lot of music still in him, and they went away from him. So, in my opinion, I think Chris should have never moved away from production. No way, no way, no way, no way. Um, and shout out to D Nice who who did a lot of production with Chris. Um, I don't know if he was credited as much as he should have been on stuff. I was not in the studio, but I've heard him speak on it. I don't know if he was credited as much as he was supposed to be for some of the production he did, but um. Even with working with Chris, it still has to be Chris's way. So you could produce with Chris, but it still has to be what he has in his head. And like I said, I just I think he never should have went away from that, man. Um, Delbert Prince, what up, Kenny? I'm listening to your podcast and Glenn podcast at the same time. Glenn, my boy Pooh from um, Lincoln High School. Is that the Glenn you're talking about? Uh, shout out to my dog. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. Crusher Blackwell, whatever happened to that dude Broadway? KRS was producing back in 95. Broadway dropped a single, Must Stay Paid, and he was never heard from since then. What happened? I have no idea. I mean, he was on Nervous Records. Did Nervous go under? Because I remember after Black Moon left, well, the boot camp click left. Mad Lion was gone. I don't believe, I, I don't know if Duck Down, I don't know if the label 
nervous was even making hip hop anymore. I don't even know the answer to that question, but shout out to Broadway, wherever you are. I was at that video shoot for that song, Must Stay Paid. Don't know if I made it into the video though, but I was there. Gregory Nettis, Nettis, KMD was another dope underrated group. There was dozens of dope underrated groups. Dope. But there were so many giants in the 90s that you could be dope and get lost in the shuffle. David Jeffrey, hey, Kenny, what's up with the Ivan Doc, DJ Doc Rodriguez interview? I got a call, Doc. All this is coming up soon. Uh, as soon as I finish the stuff that I'm working I'm working on some stuff now. As soon as I finish, I could devote more time. You know, the funny thing about this live, it has evolved because when I first started, if you guys remember, I used to come on like once a month randomly just to say what's up to you guys. And um, not only I I enjoyed it, but it was a, it was a chance to speak to everybody. So I started saying I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick one day and try to stick to that day and do it every week. And so we landed on Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I started to say, well, you know, I, it's time for me to start bringing other people onto the channel and doing interviews and just turn it into turn the live, not just the channel, turn the live into something more. So for 2024, I'm going to really make this live into way more uh, interactive and have more guests and stuff on. That's the goal. Um, that was not my original goal a few months ago when I decided to do the lives. I just wanted to come on here and say what's up to you guys. And it, I, I love it. And I love the conversations. And it's just it's just going. Um, that would be dope. The, the real to real. Have you ever worked with Lords of the Underground? Yes, I did. First, a shout out to Do It All and, and Mr. Funky Man and Lord Jazz. I did a song. I went. When Heather B was on this channel, we mentioned that this album that me and her did together called Taken Mine that came out in 1996, we're working on it in 1995, was actually her third album that we done, but the first that ever came out. Well, the second album that we were working on in 93 that got scrapped we did a song with Lords of the Underground. Heather B and Lords of the Underground did a song together that was dope. And this is right when Lords of the Underground had Chief Rocker. No, this is before Chief Rocker came. The album was out, but I don't think Chief Rocker was a single. So I think Funky Child, when Funky Child was the single and was playing, we came and we went in the studio and did a song, Heather B and Lords of the Underground, but the whole album got scrapped. So I say all that to say, my answers be mad long, y'all. I just try to give you as many details as I can remember. I did work with the Lords. Um, I produced the song with Heather B and the Lords Underground that never came out. And uh, Do It All from Lords of the Underground is in Heather B's video, All Glocks Down. Just Blaze, yep, the Hilltop Hustlers. Yes, shout out to the Hilltop Hustlers. Yeah, that was the whole that was the name of their crew. Steady B, Cool C. Um, Steady B, Cool C, and uh EST -E, uh, three times dope. I think it was the Hilltop Hustlers. That's actually a dope crew. That was a dope crew, man. The Messenger 215, salute to the channel, salute to you, man. Um Blaze, KP, what's your favorite year in the 90s for hip hop? I say 93. I say partially 93. I think the most competitive and dopest time in hip hop history, we had this conversation a few weeks back. There was a moment in time in hip hop, a moment, it was about a year's time, where there was a group of new hungry artists out there was still the artists from the 80s that were dope, was still dope. You still had LL Cool J was still rocking. Run DMC dropped down to King. BDP, KRS was still rocking. Rakim was still hot. Ice Cube was still hot. Dr. Dre was still hot. Too Short was hot. 
G rap. There was a whole wave when the 80s, there was the 80s dudes was still hot. You had the new dudes, naughty, brand newbians, those guys was were, were, were bubbling up, were had hits, Cypress Hill, those guys. And then the young pups was just getting started. Nas, Wu, Biggie, Jay, Tupac, all were like puppies. It was one moment in time where all of this was happening. I believe it was, I would go from like the middle of 92 to the middle of 93, like a 12 month period. It wasn't the whole, it was like the right, it was like the middle of 92 to like the middle of 93. The West Coast was on fire and the East. Ghetto Boys, like it was a moment. Scarface was, it was a moment. I think that 12 month period of time was the greatest time in hip hop history. It was the most competitive and most creative. And if you were dope in that period of time, you were among the best to ever do it. Gangstar, all these dudes were puppies. Premier and um, Pete Rock, just getting started. Um, that, so my answer, when you say, what's your favorite year in hip hop, 90s for hip hop, you say 93. I say 93, but partially. I say 92 into 93, that time period. If you want to say 92 and 93, that time period to me was the greatest in hip hop history. Mark, Mark the general criminal minded is way more grimy than Illmatic. Yeah, but you, yeah, you got to look at the time though. New York was <laughs> KRS brought 1986 New York to vinyl, and even though New York was Nas brought 93 Queensbridge to vinyl, but by that time we had heard crazy, we had heard other. Uh, we heard Wu already. We heard other gangster stuff. Not saying Illmatic wasn't crazy hard because it was, but in 87 when Criminal Minded dropped, you had never heard nothing like that. Um, so to say it was grimier than Illmatic and it, this, the production was a little more stripped down. I could go with that, although Illmatic was grimy as hell too because Preem was real grimy on that. Spook Realm 4Q, loving your book, DJ KP. Thank you so much for purchasing the book. I'm unfortunately happy that I wasn't the only one that grew up that way. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you for making it through. Crusher Blackwell, when, when will said G appear on your show? As soon as I could try to set it up. He has agreed to come on the show. So it's just a matter of me calling him and setting it up, y'all. So that, it's on me and him having time. That's going to be a real dope conversation because I want to really get into exactly what did he do on the album? Because his credits were wrong, too. The credits on Criminal Minded. You know what? Let me not speak on something I don't know because I was not there. But um, it says produced by Scott LaRock. Basically, Scott LaRock and KRS want to produce by Boogie Down Productions, something like that. And special thanks to said G. And I believe from what I've read and what I've heard that said G was more than special thanks. And um, but but I would like to know exactly what that was. There's a book called Rock Him Told Me, where the guy, I forgot who wrote the book, he goes into um it's it has different chapters of artists talking about how their albums were made. It's an incredible book. It's called Rock Him Told Me. And um he talked to said G about the criminal minded album, but I want to bring said G on here. I want to hear, I want to hear him speak about it. I've seen him speak on different channels, but some of these people that talk, they're not really, they cover a wide range of stuff. And it, to me, they're not really hip hop fans. Cause some of the questions they ask to me is like, I don't know. I'm not, not trying to criticize anybody, but I, I think I'm going to do it a little different. Um, let me scroll down. 
DS, besides KRS, who are your top five Bronx rappers? Wow. Well, we, are we going all the way back? Because the Furious Five, <laughs> I mean, um, you know, everybody shouts out Melly Mel as being one of the GOATs, as, as, as you, they should. Um, but my favorite Furious Five was Cowboy. Cowboy was ridiculous, y'all. Um, so, and we saying who is my top five or who is my favorite? I'm gonna go with top five, not my favorite. So I'm gonna go Melly Mel and Kaz. Mo D is from Mo D is from Harlem or the Bronx. Big Mo T is from Uptown. I'm gonna go. All right, I'm not sure about Mo D. I'm gonna go Kaz, Melly Mel. Pun. Hmm. Let me think because who else is from the BX? I mean, Fat Joe is dope. Is he my top five though? I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Fat Joe there. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I know I'm forgetting somebody dope from the Bronx. I mean, that's four. Y'all give me a second. I got to come up with a five. Um, Because I got to remember who is from the Bronx. Because back in the early days, they all were practically from the Bronx. So you could just pick from that. But I was picking, to me, the, the cream of the crop of that time. So I'm going Melly Mel and Kaz from their respective groups, even though the groups were dope. No disrespect to the rest of the dudes in the group. Of course, pun. Do I want to put AG? I'm going to put AG at five, as my fifth of the, at, at the moment because I can't remember who else is from the BX. So I'm going to leave it at that for the moment. I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. Dan Mazarazuti, why doesn't KRS fly in planes? Um, I kind of remember that story, but it I don't really want to put words in Chris's mouth. He would probably have to tell this story better, but this is what I remember. For those that don't know, KRS one does not fly. Even when he goes overseas, he takes the, the, the um, cruise ship seven days, one way. I mean, on a cruise, a luxury cruise ship, it's like being on a vacation, but still seven days, one way, and seven days back is, is, is brutal. But um, here's how I remember it. Up until like 93, KRS used to fly everywhere. And I believe he was going on... He was on a lecture tour. He was doing a bunch of dates on a lecture tour. And he was on one plane that had ridiculous turbulence. It was like, and they thought they were going to crash. It was that serious. And when the plane finally landed, Chris was like, yo, I'm really not feeling this flying. But he was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it, but I really don't like it. And I think the very next time he got on a plane, there was a scare. I don't know if I could say this on YouTube. Somebody might have planted a device. I'm going to say that. Somebody might have planted something. There was a scare that someone might have planted something on his plane and everybody had to evacuate the plane. I believe this was like the next flight after the one with the turbulence. And so everybody had to get off. And after that, he was like, you know what? You don't got to tell me a third time. And um, I believe after that, he stopped flying. That's a story I remember. But Chris could come on and say something completely different. But off the top of my head, that's what I remember. Um, let me scroll down. DJ Butter L, salute. Butter L, what's up, my dude? How are you? 
The real to real. How many days did it take to get everyone on the self destruction record? I'm not sure. I was not in the studio, but for one day, um, that'd be a great question for D Nice, since he produced self destruction. Um, I came to the studio the day that I came. Heavy D, rest in peace, and MC Light were recording. Um, and I didn't see them record their vocals. When I got there, they were already. When I got there, I think Light was done and Heavy D was about to record. And that's the first day I met MC Light in the studio that day. That was 1988, I believe. And um, I had met Heavy D before, but um, they was about to kick everybody out, including myself, out of the studio so Heavy D could record. And I remember that Trouble T. Roy was there. He was mad cool. Rest in peace, Trouble T. Roy. He was there with Heavy D. And um, my man, my man D.O. was there. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was only there for that one day. So I don't know how many days it took, but probably took days. And it was at uh, the legendary Power Play studio. Fluffy Toenails, this is the best channel. Thank you so much. Love the positive hip hop discussion. Salute. Thank you so much. You try to keep it positive on here. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll have some slippage. <laughs> but um, um, Gregory Nettis, Miss Melody's self-destruct verse was really good. They don't make music like that anymore. I've been listening to hip hop music since 1981. Good times, good times, word up. Yes, good times, 1981. Incredible records were coming out in 81. Blaze, DJ Coco kills it with the 45s. Absolutely. Shout out to DJ Coco. What's his name? AKA Show Makito. I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. Sorry. Um, he is just his creativity. He's among the best I've ever seen on the 45s. Um, as far you know, the creativity and the records he puts together and the speed in which he changes the records. Shout out to DJ Coco. E money, shout out to Kumo D. Yes, shout out to Kumo D. The Messenger 215, shout out to my big bro, Special K, Treasure 3, of course, Special K, LA Sunshine, shout out to them. The Treacherous 3 was ridiculous, y'all. Don't don't let me start fanning out again. I get, I get, I really get excited to see some of these people. And you know, I still got my picture of um me and Jimmy Spicer, a.k.a. Super Rhymes. That's the first time, only time I ever met him. Shout out to my man Zulu Jeff, who threw a party, a benefit for Super Rhymes, Jimmy Spicer. And I just walked up on him and I said, excuse me, sir, can I take a selfie with you? And he said, sure. And I took that picture. He was an absolute hero of mine. Super Rhymes was ridiculous. And at this party, I got to see perform Jimmy Spicer, the Crash Crew, and Tiski Valley catch the beat. All three of them performed at this party. I was losing my mind. And I spent an hour talking to Cool Rock Ski from the Fat Boys. I left out that party. I was in hip hop heaven. Groove Crew, thank you so much. Wow, I really appreciate your contribution. Wow, thank you so much. Um, peace, Kenny. Check out Black UNITY when you get a chance. It's a hip hop groove based on five decades of Black music with a positive message message in it. Yes, I absolutely will check it out. And once again, Groove Crew, thank you so much for your contribution. Wow. Um, wow, thank you. Let me scroll down a little bit, y'all. Come on, don't do me bad. This thing always gets, oh, here we go. Oh, we're at an hour already, damn. I try to keep these things to an hour. Um, I try to keep these things to an hour, y'all. Uh, and we already there. Napoleon, when you get 
when we get you back out in the natty, you got to do a 45 set. Yes, I am ready to go. I got my 45s ready. And by the way, shout out to Just Blaze, who is ridiculous on the 45s, by the way. A shout out to the whole Mobile Mondays crew. Shout out Operator M. Shout out my girl, um, Rebecca. Shout out my good friend, DJ Misbehavior, Money Mike, the whole, the whole squad. Um, I'm leaving somebody out. Um, but shout out to everybody, Natasha Diggs. Shout out to everybody at Mobile Mondays. And yes, Just Blaze was ridiculous. Um, and yes, I would love to do a 45 set. Anytime you get a chance, hit me. I'm there. Um, Triggs, Jimmy Spicer, it takes money. Yeah, just Jimmy Spicer was just, but Super Rhymes for me was the song for me and my brother. We heard it for the first time walking down Bedford Avenue in Flatbush. We were walking, my mother sent us to the store. Me and him were walking to the store and the record store was playing Super Rhymes. And we stood there for an hour and just listened to it. They kept playing it over and over. We couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And I got to meet him. I'm, I'm a fan, y'all. Real to real, have you ever worked with Chuck D before? Unfortunately, no. Another one of my heroes, public enemy. Um, Chuck is so super cool, by the way, y'all. He is such a good man and, and, and down to earth. I've never worked with him, never been in the studio with him. Wish I would. Dan Marazuti, I keep killing your name. What's the rarest KRS record? In my opinion, there's, there's two, in my opinion, that I have. Um, one was an instrumental 12 inch that was made by Jive Records just for me for shows. There was only one box. Um, and I was supposed to give Just Blaze one of these, and I forgot. Just, I got to get you one of these. I, there's not that many of them left, but I got you. Um, and on this, on this 12 inch, they made it for me in 1998. On this 12 inches, I'm still number one instrumental. Jimmy instrumental is the only Jimmy instrumental that exists. And a couple of other things. I think South Bronx, it was like we just put a bunch of instrumentals that I needed on one thing. And I got the idea from a tribe called Quest because I we did a show with them and um Ali, Ali Shaheed Muhammad, shout out to my brother Ali Shaheed, had a box of um what was this album? Beats, Rhymes, and Life instrumental album that Jive made specifically for him to um perform. And he had just had the box, he was cracking open the box at sound check and i was like yo at least can i get one and he was like nah nah he couldn't give them out obviously he needs them for the shows and when i saw that i was like well bdp is signed to jive too i think they they can they make me something i need some instrumentals so i went to jive and i gave them a dat some dats for some stuff i needed and they made me a 12 inch there was only 30 of them made it was one box of bdp instrumental on jive and um, I probably sold to collectors probably like three or four of them on eBay. Some collectors wanted them. But outside of that, there's not that many of them left because we used them. Um, that and there's a acetate slash dub plate. It's it's small. There's two of them. Um, one is the KRS one. The first. Well, they weren't even BDP then. They were Scott LaRock and the Celebrity 3. I do believe, I think it's, just, it's on the record, it's called Advance. You've got to advance. KRS, I think that's the first appearance of KRS-One. There's an acetate of that that I have in my possession. And um, there's an instrumental to Elementary from the Criminal Minded album. That's different than the one that's on the albums. There's like a, there's an original elementary, and then they the one on the album is a little bit different. But I guess Scott had made a dub plate of this one for them to use in their shows before they even came out. 
and KRS One had it, and I kind of borrowed it from KRS, and now it's in my possession. I've had it for literally over 30 years. So I would say those are the rarest KRS records, in my opinion. Um, we had an hour 10, y'all. I'm going to get off in a minute. I, I, I'm just running my mouth here. I love these questions. Um, JT, cool Keith for the last spot. How can I forget Ultra? Of course, cool Keith. Not even for the last spot. Oh, man, that's a good call, JT. Of course, cool Keith. I'm bugging. So we're going Melly Mel, Kaz, Pun, Cool Keith. That's a mean four. And at five, I'm not sure where Kumo D is from, so I'm going to leave him off. At five, we're going to go Fat Joe. Unless somebody got a better one. Um, that's a good call. Cool Keith. JT, nah, KP, we need another 30 minutes. Yeah, I love to talk, y'all, but I know uh, it's late. It's, it's 9 o'clock, and I try to keep it to an hour for the people who, who a lot of people come on and re-watch and watch the rewind um, of the of this live. So I want to, you know, keep it to a certain time. And, and shout out to everybody who's watching this live, and shout out to everybody who watches the rewind later on. Like I say every week, you guys are the backbone of this channel. Um, you guys rock with me every week. We don't even have no format on here. We just be talking and, um, and, um, thank you guys for hanging out and shout out to my man. And once again, just blaze on the check-in and, um, yeah, every Tuesday, eight o'clock Eastern, I'm gonna look at a couple more and we out of here. Um, James Thomas Jr. at crush. That's why Kenny won't say KRS because He's from Brooklyn, but represented BX. <laughs> no, my brother is from Brooklyn. KRS One is from the Bronx. And if you get the book, you'll understand what I mean when I say that. KRS One is a Bronx MC through and through. The Parker family lived in the Bronx and Brooklyn, and we were born in Brooklyn. Um. Robbie the Danger. Wow, thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, Uncle Kenny, we are not related. Salute, salute, Robbie the Danger. Thank you so much. Really, 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 really appreciate it, your contribution. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get off. Triggs 9802, man, your stories never gets boring, Kenny. Thank you so much. I know I. I know I talk a lot and I, you know, some people say, you know, can he be talking too much? And he, he likes to hear himself talk, which I really don't y'all. I just try to give as much information because really we're documenting hip hop right now. Once, once we're gone and these stories are gone and these moments are gone, it's gone. Um, and so we, 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 we're rocking for 300 years from now. Shout out to the people from 300 years from now who might stumble upon this wondering what used to happen back in the 80s and 90s. And you might see this and get some um, insight in the year 2300 and something. <laughs> All right. Um, we are out. Um, Imperial Jet MC Slick Rick from the Bronx. Yo! <laughs> Slicky Ricky D. Damn, y'all. But obviously, shout out to my man, Fat Joe. You know we are family forever. But I got to bump you for Ricky D. I mean, even though Ricky D is from the UK. But he's repping the BX, right? Um. That somebody just wrote JT now Slick Rick born in, in Harleston, London. Are we counting Slick Rick as the BX or no? He's mentioned streets in the BX in his song. It was a moment of fear. Um, but does he, he don't, 
be like BX, stand up. Um, the happy hour with Heather B is on it. KP, where's my money? Heather B, what's good? Heather B on the check-in. We're just about to check, click off, and Heather B comes on here. Get off my channel. Big bad, Ricky D Harlem. Now I thought he represented the Bronx, man. The happy hour with Heather B. Why are you skipping me? I'm not skipping you. This is the first time I'm seeing you on here. Get off, man. You was on here three weeks ago, hogging on my channel. Now I'm trying to cover the comment section. Uh, Robbie the Danger, no particular order. KRS. But the guy said not KRS. He said take KRS out of it. Because obviously I would have KRS at number one. But KRS out of it. Um, Fred the Guard, Slick Rick, Pun, Sha Rock was ridiculous. Shout out to Shah Rock was ridiculous. Um, would I put her over um, Kaz and, and Melly Mel? I wouldn't put her over Kaz and Melly Mel, but she was dope. Um, I can't put her over the Cold Crush. I can't put her over Furious Five, but she was dope. Um, if we're not counting Ricky D, I would put Shah Rock there. But I can't, can I put her over Fat Joe? I mean, he's had his own songs. JT, half. What about Lord Finesse? Lord Finesse. Soul Taker, shot. thank you so much for your contribution. Lord Finesse. I skipped D, I mentioned D-I-T-C-T and I skipped Lord Finesse. Of course, Lord Finesse got to be Okay, here we go, y'all. We're taking KRS out of the mix. I'm going Kaz, Melly Mel, Pun, Cool Keith, Lord Finesse. If and if, if Ricky D is not from the Bronx, that's a nice five right there. I'm gonna I'm get off on that note. Um, Triggs 982, hope you feel better, Heather B. Sway said you were sick this morning. Oh, Heather, you were sick this morning? Yeah, hope you feel better. Everybody uh, wish Heather B feels better. RIP Fred the Godson, absolute beast. Yes, Fred the Godson was ridiculous. Just a different era. AG is over Lord Finesse, and I love Finesse. AG had bigger songs than Lord Finesse. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard, man. Heather B, I'll feel better with half. Get out of here, man. Love and gratitude. His U.S. home is the BX. You know what? Let's make an executive. I'm going to get off y'all, but let's make an executive decision right now about Slick Rick. Is he from the Bronx or not? Is, is, is Slick Rick from the Bronx? What about Diamond D? Diamond D is dope. I'm going to make him more as a um, producer, but yes. Foodies Network, he from the Bronx. Stop it. Queen of Underworld, nope. FE2, yes. Rick is from the BX. Slick Rick's from the BX. Muck, muck. Uh, Fluffy said he went to school in the BX. Whoa. Fluffy told the that's if you went, he went to school. April 7th, our work. I never heard Slick Rick shout about out the Bronx. Yeah, listen to the moment I feared. He was like, he's talking about Veronica, Veronica Place. Is that the moment I feared? He's talking about Veronica Place. He's talking about another spot in the Bronx. He's talking about streets in the Bronx. Um, happy hour, Heather B. Kenny is telling me to get off. How much y'all want to bet he invites me back? You are banned. You are banned from the Kenny Parker, uh, the Kenny Parker show. Robbie the Danger, Slick Rick is Bronx all day. Yeah, Imperial J, Slick Rick moved to the Bronx at 12. <laughs> yeah. I. JT, Slick Rick, Slick Rick ain't Bronx if, K if KRS ain't Bronx. KRS is Bronx. All right, 
It looks like MM Crossfire. Yep, it was the moment I feared. Yeah, it looks like where they do that at Veronica Place is in, the, is in BK. No, there's a Veronica Place in Flatbush. I my, my junior high school was on Veronica Place, but he was talking about Veronica in the Bronx, I believe. He wasn't talking about Flatbush. Nine is from the Bronx. Shout out Nine. That's my dude. I can't put him in the top five, but that's my guy. Rosmel, pardon Lord Tariq, party Artie, KRS. KRS is not any. The, the, the question was take KRS out of it and, and name the five. Lord Tariq was dope. I wouldn't put him over Melly Mel and Kaz, though. I mean, these guys, what they did in their time, they were they were top MCs. And they a lot of their a lot of what they say still stands. Ronan Ali, shout out my dude. Kid Capri. I'ma call Kid Capri a DJ more than an MC. I'ma call um I'ma call Kid Capri a a DJ. Heather B, I don't care if I'm banned. I'll be back. I'm in demand, son. <laughs> oh my god. God, Heather is on here trying to control my channel. Just like KRS wasn't born BX, but he rep it. Yeah, but we lived in the BX in very important times. So, but yeah, he was not physically born in the BX, but he repped the BX very hard. But he came out like South Bronx, we here. Slick Rick never was like Bronx, but he did mention some streets. But it looks like, it looks like um, Dana Dane. Shout out to my dude, Dana Dane. I think Dana Dane's from Fort Greene, though, Brooklyn. It looks like the overwhelming, um, it looks like the overwhelming consensus is that Slick Rick is from, um, that Slick Rick is from um, the Bronx. So we're going to say Slick Rick. Robbie the Danger, once again, wow, Robbie the Danger, you're killing me. Thank you so much. Um, Heather B, come back to the live, please. Run that. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a real huge contribution. Heather, my, you might have to come back on that one. Um, all right, y'all, we had an hour and 22. I'm going to get off. Um, Ter Terrell McMiller, shout out DJ Chuck Chill Out and Cool Chip. Shout out Chuck Chill. I never met Cool Chip, but shout out Chuck Chill Out. That's my dude. Um, a lot of people shouting out Nine. I loved Nine. I listen. Not only did I like what you want, Nine. I also like how how many MCs, many uh, any MCs wave, wave your arm and he sampled the Rock Kim sample. I was with that. Um, Nice and smooth is from the Bronx. Oh, you're killing me. I'm about to get off, y'all, but yo. <laughs> yo. That's really a group, though, but I did pluck dudes out of the... Nice and smooth. Who would I bump? Kaz Melly Mel. Cool Keith, Pun, and Slick Rick. I can't, I, nice and smooth, that's family and they dope. Can I bump them? Damn. All right, this is it, y'all. We, we can go on, we can go on, we can go on. Um, he said, by Melly Mel. Wow, you do met big, big brat. Big Brat threw Melly Mel under the bus for nice and smooth. Wow. Wow. Gregory Nettis, take out Cool Keith, put nine or nice and smooth. I can't, I can't take out Cool Keith. All right, y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. April seventh artwork. Stick to your five. I'm gonna stick to my five. But nice and smooth is rough. Is a rough one. I wasn't ready for that one. April seventh. You cannot take out Cool Keith. You can't. You really can't. Um. 
All right. Muck Muck says, nah, Melly Mel stays, homie. Yeah. All right. We out. Shout out to Heather B on the check-in. Shout out to um, Just Blaze once again on the check-in. Um, we are out of here. Thank you so much for all the contributions. Thank you guys for watching. Next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God willing, we will be back here. And I am out of here, y'all. Peace.